Sector 6 reporting from satellite number 3 now in magnetization orbit Jupiter 4 a subject He was to me apparently an ordinary man doing extraordinary things. A very traditional Englishman. He was a very complicated man, but he was also a very simple man. I recognized him as someone special. He was dedicated to absolute truth above all else, despite what it cost him. You could feel the weight that he carried on his shoulders. Here is a man where nobody knew who he was, so ordinary as to even become a taxi driver, camouflaged himself in such a way as to bring the greatest truth and wisdom to this planet. He mastered uh, the main forms of yoga, Raja, Kundalini, Nani. He could raise Kundalini to the highest chakra. He went into somatic trance over 600 times. He was able to do that within two minutes, but above all, he was a karmic agent. He was a master of the law of karma. When I was a child, when I've closed my eyes, it's always been blinding light. And I couldn't understand it for many years. People say, oh, close your eyes to, to be dark. I mean, I've never known what it is to be dark. He had a very hard childhood. He moved around all over the country. He did have fond memories of sports. His dad taught him to box, but he was never very happy about his childhood. It's a long way between a young, small, sensitive boy walking the fells of North Yorkshire alone, rather sickly, carrying a metal bucket from a spring about half a mile away and witnessing the most elevated initiation offered to Earthman, that of Ascension. Uh, one Saturday morning, while I was washing up some dishes, I had a voice, uh, quite defin definitely a voice out of this world, say to me, prepare yourself, you are to become the voice of interplanetary parliament. And later on, um, I found I could contact intelligences from other planets. The masters who used him knew that they could rely upon him to put their message through him because he would put uh, truth above all else and he wouldn't color it with his own personal likes and dislikes. Will you now try to go uh, into a transform? I will try. Mr. King has explained to me that, in fact, it may take him 30 seconds, even perhaps as much as a minute, to get into a trance. And during this time, he has suggested that we should be entirely silent. <gasps> I am Neon is Ethereus. You are liable a to upset of the balance of your earth through number one atomic experimentation and number two your deviation from the spiritual laws. And it was actually in London in the very early days before I came here, it was around 62, and it was at Caxton Hall and he actually took a transmission from the Master Jesus, and the hall was packed. More than ever, more than ever before, does the world need your love. You see, there is so much suffering in this world. Children, this very night, are hungry. I couldn't stop myself from crying. I wanted to, but I couldn't. And it was like all of my doubts were just washed away. 
couple of years after that, I came to the States and was actually the master's cook for about 35 years. I mean, the transmissions that he received, it was obvious he was making tremendous cosmic events happen. I'm always with my husband in the same room when he takes one of these transmissions. And afterwards, I supervise and take part in the spiritual healing and massage which is given to revive him from his ordeal. And the acute strain, both physical and mental, which are caused by the majority of these, have affected his general health in an unfavorable way. And I believe that they will become the greatest and most valued treasures to the future generations to come for all time. Basically, it was weaving this pattern throughout the years to create this amazing program, amazing mission to save the world. And in a way that uh, we, truly normal people, could continue his mission of saving the world. When I read the Nine Freedoms, um, the introduction blew my mind, just that. And it made sense. Everything just all of a sudden clicked. I was with him on the, the last phase of the Saturn mission he did in Loch Ness in 1986. Im imagine sort of sharing a, a room with a, a panther <laughs> or a lion or whatever, that kind of, whoa, you know, he's a very powerful individual, but there's this amazing grace and love and, and devotion. I was in Operation Sunbeam and in the Saturn mission uh, 12 times to Lake Powell. And uh, you will meet a human being that is the greatest that you have ever met. Now it depends on how open you are. Now this is a metaphysical breakthrough. Uh, for the first time on the physical levels of Earth, we can actually store prayer power. Blessed are they who work for peace. If there's an earthquake, uh, and let's hope there won't be, but, but if there is, we'll discharge it and we'll direct it to the earthquake, earthquake victims. And we may direct it to a troubled country, and there are some troubled countries in this world, and uh, prayer energy concentrated to this tremendous degree you know, it's a fantastic concentration, this uh, should do some good. Using radionics uh, as part of our path in spiritual action, such as being able to store spiritual power in a battery, a physical battery, or to manipulate spiritual energy in cooperation with higher masters through radionic equipment uh, to the Mother Earth as a karmic action. So not only was he a channel for the greatest teachings I think the world's ever seen were certainly ever recorded from the highest masters, the masters who in ancient times would have been called the gods. I'd like to play you some extracts uh, from a transmission made by Saint Gulin just prior to Operation Carmelite. This is the hour, the hour of light or darkness, when the foundation stones can be laid for the new age, or never can it be built by man upon this planet. Most people think that there's no life beyond Earth, except maybe some bacteria somewhere in some other solar system somewhere. And the belief is that life is so rare, um, and there's no real purpose to life. And then what Dr. King is teaching is that it's anything but that. I mean, it's so different from what our civilization uh, teaches. It isn't just a weird, wacky UFO cult or organization as the initial common perception may be. 
is something profoundly real and profoundly important. I've had responsibilities which really should not be given to any man. I was given the choice of either going to another world or remaining on this world. I decided to remain on this world among you. Now, many times I've regretted that decision. But there are a few times I'm glad that I made that decision. And this is one of those times. He could make you laugh like you wouldn't believe with his jokes and, you know, he would try and relax people. I'd never laughed so hard in my entire life and never have since, uh, where we would almost fall off the chair with laughter because he loved to entertain. He liked to make people laugh and he loved to laugh. The reason my life has meaning is because I met him. I always wanted to be somebody who would help people and he gave me the opportunity to do that. You know, real greatness is difficult for people to recognize. Unfortunately, he had to do what he had to do, and he had to do it quietly. I think George King knew that he was completely ahead of his time, uh, that he was not going to be understood. How would you answer the criticism that I've often heard leveled against the Ethereum Society? and against you personally, that you're nothing more than a crank. Uh, well, uh, to uh, condemn is easy. To investigate is much more difficult, but much more profitable. But they... nobody else has said that he's being contacted by people from outer space. Oh, well, I've heard dozens of people say Have you? This. Oh, yes, absolutely. Uh, I must say I don't believe a lot of them. Uh, but you think you're the only one, really? Uh, no, I, don't, I didn't say that. You said that. No, but you said there are others, but you don't believe them. I said I don't believe all of them. Do you think flying saucers are visiting Earth? Yeah, they've been visiting Earth for many thousands of years, yes. Uh, Mr. King is sincerely misguided or deluded about the nature of the scientific aspects of his claims. You've got to assume that they're fantasies. That is, that they are things which originate within the mind itself. From the philosophical content alone, uh, they are... Uh, pretty fantastic. Uh, so they did come from somewhere. Uh, either they came from my mind or they came from another source. If they came from another source, they're excellent. If they came from, from my puny little mind, then uh, I'm quite a person. This UFO. He was never accepted by the UFO crowd because of the spiritual aspect, and he was too far out for the spiritual crowd. There were a very small number of people, literally a handful of people, who fully recognized what this individual was all about, uh, recognized the fundamental, the hallmarks of truth, and to a very great extent dedicated their lives, have dedicated their lives, to continuing the legacy which he has brought to this world be kind to one another, you know, serve and you'll be great, but go outside of yourself to help other people. What Dr. George King does is reveal that sense of God in a far greater way than we've ever really had. It literally becomes um, something that is truly and magnificently cosmic, going beyond death and going beyond this world. It took an awful, a lot of comic manipulation to give you George a king, as you call him. Make the best of this, a form. He has enough wisdom to prepare you for the great tasks to come. And he will do so, but he cannot force you to listen. 
it is up to you to go out of your way to learn the path to your own salvation. Is it not? <laughs>